Hello, everybody, and welcome to the PWO WrestleCast. Uh, guys, it's been a hell of a year for 2020. Um, it's been rough. It's been, uh, for us, kind of pretty fantastic just because of the guys that we've gotten to talk to. It, it's fantastic. But uh, we're going to take one last look at 2020 at our 2020 predictions, and then we are looking forward to the future. As always, I'm your host, Matt Lilly. With me tonight, we got K-Market, K-Market, k Mark. K marked, huh? Words, Jay Hadger. What's up? What's up? What's up? We got Cod Sinclair, best ref in the biz. Can I can I throw Hager out? Uh, you gotta give him at least one warning. Referee's discretion. All right. There's your warning. Thank you, Pat. And always, as backed by popular demand, it's Pat, Mr. Lilly. How you doing tonight? I am good. Good. All right, guys. So maybe you guys don't remember this. Last year, we cut a, a prediction show for what we thought was going to happen in 2020. Um, and what I have are th- the predictions. All right. So uh, I'm, I'm going to just go through it by everyone's predictions. We're going to start with uh, Ben's here. All right. So Ben's predictions. One, Sammy Guevara takes over the inner circle. Two, Not yet. Two, AEW's women's division will continue to flounder. It's still their weakest part, but I wouldn't say it's floundering like it was a year ago. Shoot, as, as, I, would, as I think we said in June, I think it's in much better condition since then. Yeah. The appearance of Thunder Rosa has fixed a lot of things for me. Don't forget yeah. Serena Deeb. And Serena Deeb. And w- it's not Riho as champion. Riho wasn't the problem, you I- racists. Next up, you had Undisputed Era will end or uh, start 2020 with all the gold on NXT, and they're going to end 2020 with all the main roster gold. Well, <laughs> they're uh, not even touching the main roster. In 2020, two months after Mania, the women's tag titles will be defunct. I don't know how they're still going. Around the waist of Asuka and Charlotte at the moment. <laughs> And your final prediction, WWE will change the title of one of their pay-per-views like Extreme Rules or Hell in a Cell to something like maybe a Judgment Day or we're going to add a tagline, uh, but we're going to try and move away from the uh, gimmick pay-per-view names. I was about a half right with the with the taglines with uh, every pay-per-view extreme now. Extreme Rules and um, God, I, it's bad. I can't remember half of them anymore. The Horror Show. The Horror Show. Extreme rules. Um, yeah, they all have tag lines now. None of them are good. I don't think we've had one since SummerSlam. Um, I don't remember off the top of my head either. Payback, Roman Reigns coronation. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'll take, you know, 0. 0.75 out of five. All right. Up next, we had uh, my predictions. Omega taking the belt off of Moxley at All Out 2 will be match of the year. <sighs> I got the Kenny totally wrong on both accords. But, man, here's one that I really forgot about. And, God, I was real close. Uh, Dijak will come to the main roster and get the Shinsuke Nakamura treatment. He didn't even get the Shinsuke treatment. <laughs> didn't even didn't even get a Rumble win. Um. <laughs> uh, Keith Lee is going to be primed to win the Royal Rumble for 2021, but he will not get a run as NXT champ. Uh, wrong again. Although the Rumble <laughs> part, the Rumble part, maybe. Uh, he is primed to win the well, not win, but he's competing for the title next Monday. So yeah. we'll but see. Maybe maybe but, he's going to be the champion coming into the Rumble. But it's not the Rumble. It's not the Rumble. It's really not. I'm sad by it. Um. By the end of 2020, AEW will have a second TV show on TV. So close. It's close. Looks like it's projected for 2021. Uh, the leader of the Dark Order will be Luke Harper. Yeah. This one is this and one is sad. especially sad that you, you were right about. Um, yeah. And uh, my, what ended up also being my last one, and thanks COVID, 
Braun Strowman will not win a world title in 2020. Well, uh, another other that we had for the show, Mike DeShazo, longtime fan, posted this one. Uh, Hangman Page will be the leader of the Dark Order. Maybe a sign of 2021. Uh, yeah. And we have Mr. Lilly's prediction. By the end of 2020, Marty Score will be a household name. Which, if you know, you're following along, maybe, but not for the right reasons. <laughs> not <laughs> for the reasons we were projecting. <laughs> no, certainly not the reasons I thought. Uh, by the end of 2020, this one, this one is scarily accurate to me. Um, in fact, maybe Pat has re- retaken the name Coach Stradamus again. <sighs> Uh, by the end of 2020, WWE will be scrambling to have Raw and SmackDown's ratings equal NXTs and will gut the NXT roster to save the main roster due to Vince not understanding NXT. Asking his glory. Yeah, all the retribution guys, Keith mm-hmm. Lee. Even, you know, that actually started as early as Mania when they brought Alistair and Gargano. I mean, they said Gargano and Chapa back down, but. Well, that was a year or two ago. Actually. That wasn't. That wasn't. That's right. That was two manias ago. Never yeah. mind. What, a, what am I even talking about? COVID timing, man. It Holy jeez. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. My bad on that. Uh, Edge is going to win the Royal Rumble and then win the title at WrestleMania. So Ooh. close. So close. Final, final three. Final three. Roman Reigns will not be in a title match at WrestleMania. Yep, hit on that one too. Correct. Thanks, COVID. <laughs> and another one. Another one. Goldberg will be in a title match at WrestleMania. Batting six hundred. That wins you batting title in baseball. <laughs> it does. It also makes you a Hall of Famer. <laughs> it also <laughs> makes people question if you're a real or not. Well, real, you know. Uh, maybe Mr. Lilly's taking those, uh, I would say, performance enhancement drugs, but maybe he's just Mark Feeling feel, feel a lot of hate coming from the uh, other predictors. Coach, I, I just put you over as Coach, Coach Stradamus here. Come on. Pretty sure you just said I was taking performance enhancers. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure you did just say that. Referee, have you even drug tested him yet? Yes, I have. He's clean. There he is. I even I even checked his knee pads, his elbow pads, his wrist tape, and his shoes. I even checked his trunks though, because we're trying to keep this to a PG show. All right, fair, <laughs> fair. I can respect it. Listen, I get thrown out in the first five seconds for nothing, and Pat gets cleared in two seconds. Well, well because I mean, you opened your mouth. So I'll that. say this. Look, <laughs> Pat, Pat. Pat showed up. And decided that he was going to tell everyone how 2020 was going to go. Let's see how his 2021 is going to go. So, uh, guys, are y'all ready? As ready as I'll ever. Are be. you ready? Are you ready? Let me ask you. Are you three, wo- three words for you. Let's get ready to. Hey, everybody! It's time for my prediction. Uh, so, my first prediction for 2021 is. Uh, the 2021 match of the year will be the North versus FTR. I think this match is fantastic. Uh, I think it's going to be great if I'm going to be honest with y'all. Uh, and I, as long as the North stay together long enough with everything set in motion, it should happen, especially with how much both parties have been asking for it. Uh that- that's the reason I question you on this one is Impact seems like they're getting ready to break those dudes up. Hopefully it's some sort of swerve. I agree. I hope. Yeah, is. I'm right there with you, Pat. I, uh, I'm i unsure of how long they're going to stick together because the couple of times I've watched the couple of times I've watched Impact, thank you, uh, not COVID related, <laughs> uh, the couple of times I've watched Impact, it has felt like the North has been like starting to push this. We're, you know, starting to butt heads. You're costing me these singles matches. You're costing me 
our tag matches. What are we doing? Ethan Page is losing his mind. Yeah. <laughs> He's not the karate man. He's not karate man. Yeah. So it's it going to be interesting to see, can they mend the fences or do, does it just become a, we got to s- separate. Yeah. We will see on that. I'm hopeful. I'm very, very hopeful. And with that, Ben, you are on the clock. Yeah, so uh, going off of that, uh, I believe we are going to get another all-in-esque show, uh, basically under the AEW banner. Uh, They're going to bring in a couple of just indie guys from around whatever companies they're working with, because they've established all these different connections with impact and you have the everybody's relationship with new japan uh so i think we got another all-in-esque show where it's just a bunch of promotions coming together to put on a crazy good show all right that's valid i think it's possible especially with the rallying cry i think with AEW at the moment Yep. Ryan, what do you got? Let's say it's really quiet. Ryan. Hello. Timer's on. That's fine. I have three. I have three minutes. Yep. Um so I had three that didn't make my cut, so I'll start with those. Um kind of to piggyback off of off of off of what uh off of what Matt Booz most wanted said over there. Um we're going to get a super card. Um, I think it'll involve all the wrestling, impact wrestling, and WA. Um, second one is that uh, New Japan will split uh, the heavyweight and intercontinental titles. Please. I think that it's much needed. Um, and then my last one that did not make the cut is that Raw and SmackDown will merge the tag team titles because of depth. Um, I don't think that they have the roster to keep both. Um so into my actual bold predictions. Um, Number one. I will start with the Undisputed Era. Um, they will make their Raw debut after WrestleMania. And by summer's end, they will win all the gold. The reason you put them on Raw is because if you put them on SmackDown, you're going to have to immediately bury them to Roman. And I think that what Raw desperately needs right, right now is a is a group that is loved and that is widely regarded as one of the best stables uh, at least in the united states um so how we get there um i think i think we have um i think the build to this is that we're going to get adam cole in in the royal rumble as as a surprise entrant um he won't be up on the main roster though yet um uh, Keith Lee is going is, is going to eliminate him. Um, Keith Lee will win the WWE Championship once we get to Mania, um, and then from there we will get the Undisputed Era storyline. Um, I don't think because there's a hot rumor right now that it'll be a triple threat um, between Brock and Drew and Keith. Um, I don't think Brock returns to WWE until we have fans back in the stands. Um, I think that's where his biggest payday is, is when he is in front of a large audience that'll make his pocket more, more rich. Um, and I think that after they have all of the gold by the end of the summer and you move to Survivor Series, um, there's nobody else to challenge them. So that's where they will establish a dominance. You'll have a team step up um, and try to challenge them and will falter. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go and say, if you're going to have uh, Undisputed Era winning all the gold, there is another group of four guys currently on Raw mm-hmm. called the Hurt Locker. And at Survivor Series, we're getting war games. You know, I'd pay for that. But with that... That's our three minutes for that one. We got to move on to our next one. Okay, everybody. Up next, we have Mr. Lilly. Go ahead and give us your prediction. Uh, so I'm going to start with the uh, prediction that will be correct first. Um, 
in I mean that chronologically since uh, it's Royal Rumble related. Um, we all know that desperate times have come for the WWE, and we all know that that only means one thing, and it's John Cena. And John Cena is going to win the Royal Rumble, and he's going to face oh. he's going to face the Raw champion and win the Raw championship belt at WrestleMania. Um, this is I know Cena has kind of stepped away, but this is the formula that Vince has always gone back to. Um, when ratings are bad for better or worse, um, he's going to talk him into another run here as we go towards uh, WrestleMania and get him booked in since they're going to save uh, The Rock for two manias from now to make sure that there's going to be butts in the seats and they're going to make sure it's a Florida show in two years, uh, mm -hmm. prob probably Miami. Um, for Rock Roman and yeah that's it it's going to be John Cena we will once again be able to see him and uh, not enjoy him all right so so here's my only question on this is I don't know what Cena's filming schedule is like um, I will admit to you that this was a late addition to my predictions as I was speaking with our other brother uh, and we were talking about this and he was like, oh, I bet you Cena comes back at some point this year. And I was like, you know what? You're right. And it's right now because they are just flailing to get any kind of ratings for Raw. And they're doing so poorly that it's it's John Cena time, and it makes so much sense. We we were talking the other night that there, there is nobody really built to win the Rumble right now. Um, there's not even like there's not even you've you've booked Keith Lee is the obvious guy, but you've booked him into wrestling for the title a month before Rumble for beating a guy in a singles match. Um, so with that said, if it's not seen, it's going to be Seamus. All right. And I'll, I'll just add this real quick, just because I did look all of Cena's movies currently are in post-production. So. Ba -ba -da -ba. Ba -da -ba. But didn't he vanish from the middle of the ring after his match with the fiend, which is why it would make total sense for Bray Wyatt to win the Elimination Chamber, Drew McIntyre's belt, and John Cena to challenge him for the Raw title. All right, so my second prediction, and I'm sorry, guys, mine get real depressing as we keep moving forward here. Come uh, on. Yeah, right. So uh, my bold prediction for AEW is that they will spend the remainder of 2021 in Daly's place. Um, initially, I was saying that they're going to stay at limited capacity for the remainder of the year, but I'm hoping, and God, I'm hoping that come football season, people are going to be able to fill up football stadiums. So maybe, hopefully, we're going to be able to fill up Daly's place. So, quick and easy. I just, I don't see them traveling. I think they're going to wait it out. Tony Khan has said, uh, you know, he's in no hurry. They're already, they are making more money than they're spending. So. I and I know they are upping capacity for this week's show. I don't know if that's going to continue here on out, but. I think this week's is a little bit of a special, special. Uh, special case. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone, anyone, anything else? No, I think I think you're spot on, and I think yeah. that um, um, some of the hot rumors just reading on Twitter is that um, we may be in the midst of another potential shut shutdown in the in in the United States. Um, 
So right now, if you know what whatever happens, you know I think just the best thing for right now, everybody does is to be safe. And if that's what it takes to be safe, then I say do it. I feel like I feel like it's very hard to project out a whole year with this COVID. I mean, obviously. Mm-hmm. We have no idea. I mean, um, I, I think if they can, they will get out of Daly's place. I don't think that they will choose to stay there if they have an opportunity to travel. Um, AEW has always been very much about the fans. And I think they know, like, well, we're, we've been in one corner of the country. And they're going to try their best to make every opportunity for people around the country to see live shows. Um, That doesn't mean it will happen. I mean, I I think it's a reasonable uh, prediction because we, I mean, we really don't know. I mean, we were joking about COVID when it started, like, Oh man, maybe we'll get uh, an extra week off of work, extra week off of work since spring (laughs) break starting. Like we'll, We'll have two weeks of spring break and we'll be recharged and we'll be right back at, you know, in school. And, uh, you know, here we are nine months later. Yeah. Nine months later, we spent five months teaching online uh, and then another month online in November. And we're still having all kinds of crazy COVID related tests every morning to go in the building. So you find out. This is my bold prediction, though. Uh, ben, you are on the clock. Next bold prediction is, and this isn't going to make a lot of people happy, Roman Reigns will hold the belt all year. He will start the year with the belt. He will end the year with the belt. And if he loses a match this year, he will not lose the belt in that match. Hmm. I think that's it's believable, honestly. As horrible as that is, it's believable. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't think there's any arguing that. Um, I still question whether or not this Roman character could hold up in the long run. Um, let's see what happens when fans come back. When fans come back, he's either getting booed out of the building or he is made a career resurgence and fans are, you know, going crazy for him for no reason. You know, and that's the crazy thing is that um, is that we haven't seen heel, the heel version of Roman Reigns in front of a live audience yet. Um, you can't count the Thunderdome be, because – they tell you who to cheer and boo for, and if you don't do it right, they go ahead and just boot you. Um, so I don't think that that's a very good ben, a very good litmus test for that. Um, but it'll be interesting to see how crowds react to them. I have a feeling it's going to be very Cena-esque of the uh, sure. let's go Roman, Roman sucks. Um, and if, you still do, if that's still the case, then this is a failure. In. It's a fail. It's a failure if the, if he's getting seen a, like fifty fifty. I mean, he's supposed to be a bad guy, even though they're not really pushing the envelope with him yet. And I think they have to go much further to get him over as a bad guy. I'm very curious to see what his merch is selling currently. Um. Uh, well, I'm sure every 12 year old has his Thanos glove. All right. Todd Sinclair, you mm. are on the clock. So let's get a little exciting here. Um, AEW is going to bring out their trios titles. Yes. That's my number yeah. two ball prediction. Um, right now, I have seven, eight, nine, 10, 11 tag teams right now. Um, sorry. 11 trios um, that could uh, that could buy for the titles. Um, you've got you you've got the Dark Order. You got Death Triangle. You have FTR and Sean Spears. You have Butcher Blade and Eddie Kingston. You have the Nightmare Family. You have you have Hardy Party. You have Jurassic Express, Inner Circle, Team Taz, SCU, and just for kicks the 
with with uh, with a Brandon Cutler. I could have been some out, but those are eleven solid trios teams. Um, uh, I think that they will do a tournament of sorts to determine the inaugural winner of these titles with the finals culminating at all out. I love it. Um, I also I love it. We... it on the Monday show. I think it was you, Mr. Lilly saying the best possible final for that would be Eddie Kingston and his family versus death triangle. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It'd be beautiful. Death triangle. Yeah. I'm all in on it. Yeah. First. And if and when COVID ever ends, there's so many more potential groups that we've seen attached to AEW. Um, you know, there's so much you could do still. Uh, you didn't mention Gun Club either. Gun Club's another one. Yeah. No, and, because I know I know you hate Billy Gunn, but I'm just saying. No, I, I actually love Billy Gunn. I just I just don't think that we will see. Billy Gunn in an AEW ring in 2021. He's just, um, he's mainly on Dark. The other thing, so I don't but, know. I mean, but you know, there to your point though, there are a ton of teams out there. Oh yeah. All right. So with that, Mister Lily, take it away. Uh, so you know. I kind of, two of these three are kind of attacked from an angle of like, man, I hope I'm wrong about these. So that way, like, either I'm right about all these predictions again and I can continue to gloat about it, or like I'm wrong and then super relieved that these things didn't happen. And my second one is we will see The Undertaker wrestle in the match in WWE in 2021. No matter how much retirement stuff we saw, we've seen we've seen every guy ever that they've done this retirement stuff. They just can't stay away. How many? I mean, look at Ric Flair, man. And what did Vince say about Rick after Ric Flair? I'm never doing a big retirement thing ever again. Because you can't guarantee that they're never going to show up and wrestle again. The ratings are bad. We're getting to mania season. One more last ride. How many more last rides do we really need? Though? We're at we're at like six. <laughs> this We've gone over five more than we needed. Um. So for my um for my bonus here this will be a Kane Undertaker match at Mania. Oh, you took this a different route than what I was saying. I was going to say oh this is totally going to be a undertaking making big payday in Saudi Arabia show. <laughs> no, no, no. Mania season cuz the ratings are so bad. All right. God, I hope you're wrong. But <laughs> like I said, I get to be wrong, and I don't have to see him at Mania, or I'm right, and I'm right, and I get to gloat about it. <laughs> I just, uh, you guys have all been on here. I don't like how they did the Undertaker retirement. Um, I imagine that there's a better way to do that. I think we're all going to always say there were there was a better way to retire somebody. Uh, you don't do it. That's how. I mean, yes. Uh, I think you know the. I think we're always going to compare it to Shawn Michaels, Ric Flair, at WrestleMania. Is like that is how you go out in a retirement angle, but. But then both had a match. <laughs> yeah. I'm of the opinion now at this point, like, put them when they hit the Hall of Fame. They are no longer an active wrestler, but you're still paying them under a Legends contract to sell their merchandise. I just want to point out that it's not my fault we went over my time on this. No, you're good. We've we've uh, been under for a lot of these, actually. Prediction number three. Prediction Matt. number three, and maybe my darkest one yet. And 2020 has changed you. 2020. 
has, has made me very dark and evil. Um, very nice, very evil. Uh, and 2021 is going to be the end of a very, very long run. It's going to be new uh, NXT's biggest signing since Shinsuke Nakamura. Not. Triple H is going to bring in Kazuchika Okada. Um, he won't. First of all, he will not be in NXT if he signs with WWE. Wait a second, because I got I got this. Uh, there are reports back in February that Triple H has made this his personal mission to sign Kazuchika Okada, and I don't think Okada would want to go to the main roster. And I think if you're going to bring him in, you have to put him with Triple H because that's where we had the most success for Shinsuke. Um, it's working for Kushida. Kushida's not Okada. <laughs> Uh, As of January 1st, he will be a freelance wrestler. So, what's left for New Japan for Okada? There ain't nothing. He's done it all. He's too young to just stay in New Japan for the rest of his career. There is nothing left for him to do. I have a suggestion, and you will see it in my prediction. Anyone else super depressed by this news? No, because it's not going to happen. I hope you're wrong. Um, as long as he doesn't go back to TNA, I think he'll be fine. I'd almost rather him go to TNA than WWE. Mm. Uh, in that case, yeah, but otherwise, stay far away. Um, I think I think the most likely destination if he comes to the States is obviously AEW. I think just the relationship that I think will come eventually between New Japan and All Elite Wrestling Um, may not be this year, but um, Okada's already been on Dynamite, so. (laughs) Valid. That's valid. All right. Wait, I thought that was Tana. Was it? I think so. No, I I thought... I they thought Okada was on there too. The point is, it's time to move on to Ben's third <laughs> prediction. Uh, ben, you are on the clock. This prediction comes more from the network side of the wrestling things. Is USA takes away Raw's last hour? Uh, I think it's. You know, that last hour always has a steep drop on. That would be big time. Yeah. Um, great. USA hasn't really been too happy with Raw. Raw's ratings. We've seen two hour shows are arguably, you know, better shows. We've seen it with SmackDown. We see it with AEW. It, the two hour time frame, you can retain the attention of everybody and you don't kind of have that just like i'm tired of watching wrestling now at that three hour mark all right that's you know that's a bold prediction that is my boldest prediction i I think it's the most like it's bold but i think like it's kind of the most reasonable one in some ways like Man, that would be such a blow to WWE. They do better with their two-hour shows. That's my thing. Like they, they get so much stuff that they don't need to do with their three-hour-long laws. Well, the problem is, is they could do plenty with three-hour shows if they, you know, put wrestling on their shows. Just saying. Yeah. Todd, any thoughts? <laughs> no hopes. No wishes. <laughs> No, I mean, um, I would rather if they're going to keep the third hour, use it to benefit the uh, at least the 205 Live group or the lower card guys. Um, but ultimately, what would be best is if, if you know, Ben's prediction came true, um, they just got rid of it. But if it's going to stay, they need to utilize it better. Part of utilizing it better, and we've said this all the time, is stop writing the dang – script an hour before the show starts stop having three different talk show segments you got ms yeah. tv alexa bliss's playground uh 
you know, the heavyweight champion has to come out and open the show and cut a promo every week. Yeah. Like every hour has one full segment at least devoted to just cutting promos where there's no match involved. I mean, it's a huge, yeah. huge problem. Oh, yeah. Agreed. And I think cutting that last hour is going to reduce them to, you know, and it's going to force them to play their cards better. I hope you're right. I could just see an hour less of the same crap, but <laughs> still Miz TV and a moment of bliss and, uh, you know, the KO show and Seth Rollins Sunday morning sermons. <laughs> All right, Cod, you're on. Prediction number three and probably my boldest. Um, starts with a little bit of a prelude. Um, November 6th, 2019, one man stood in the middle of a squared circle and said, if I do not defeat Chris Jericho at full gear, I will never challenge for the AEW championship again. Um, that man was Cody at the time. Um, MJF, of course, this was the infamous match he threw the towel in, took him to Dick Kick City, Jericho won. Um, Cody Rhodes will be AEW world champion this year. Um, oh, yeah. Now, I have two theories for this. Um, either he gets his match straight up with Kenny Omega, um, because I believe that Kenny will hold the title for a majority of the year. Um, my other theory, and it is more and is more interesting, um, he will be the first defector for Impact Wrestling, defeat Rich Swan, face Kenny Omega at the AEW M- Impact Supercard, and then we get Kenny Omega versus Cody Rhodes for your main event at the at at the Supercard. Um, the reason I went this route was because who's going to put the butts in the seats more? Who's, who should be, who should be your main event? Should it be Kenny Omega versus Rich Swan? Would you rather watch that? Or would you rather watch Kenny Omega versus, versus Cody Rhodes? Now the main problem with the, with the WCW in invasion back in 2001 was that they didn't have enough main main event talent. Yeah. Um, to be able to carry them their themselves as a brand. You tell um, me Buff Bagwell isn't over? Buff Bagwell's not over. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Why are we just Buff Bagwell here, um, Ryan? Yeah, tell me Chuck Palumbo's not a main eventer. No. Um, so the next <laughs> obvious step was to have solidified WWF veterans make their way and defect over guys that have been WWF since they came into the company. Um, Stone Cold Steve Austin, Kurt Angle. Um, so I don't think it's totally out of the realm of possibility that once we really get into this rivalry between AEW and Impact and we have kind of a pseudo invasion for people to start jumping shit. I don't think it's totally, you know, out of you know, out of the realm of possibility. Um but overall, though, my bold prediction is that Cody Rhodes will be the AEW World Heavyweight Champion this year. The bold prediction, Cotton. Let's bold see if it pays off. Prediction. Let's see if it pays off. My issue with that is Cody, Cody Rhodes, the Nightmare Cody Rhodes, whatever he wants to be called. He lost that match against Jericho. Uh, Cody didn't have his last name then. Cody and Cody Rhodes are two different personas. That's where I hope they that they don't take this. That I is like my one thing I don't want. I would much rather it, be. It, it's gonna be. It's gonna be. If this happens, it's gonna be a title versus title thing, where the belt collector wants the belt, but to get, he's gonna deny him the opportunity. Unless he also puts his belt up. Yeah. And that's going to be the way Cody gets a title opportunity to win it. I'm thinking you backdoor it, and if you have him... That's the only way you can book it, in Mm -hmm. my opinion. Yeah. I've said that if he's challenged, it's one thing. But if he's 
challenging. And I know that's just semantics, but. I mean, they have to address it. Yes. It has to be addressed. And it's got to be something that makes sense, not, well, fuck what I said, because all it is is my words. And then as soon as you say, my my, words are not good. Yeah, my words don't mean anything. It's my actions. Like, no, not, not good. <sighs> yeah, I just don't want it to be the name. Don't, don't let the name be the thing. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I agree. Just because you've gotten your last name back does not mean you have changed who you are. Yeah, like like have them beat MJF to earn the right back. Or yes, yeah, something. Something. He needs, if he wants right to, right he needs right to beat Jericho. No. Yeah, yeah, no, you know, I, I kind of agree with that. I like that. I, I, I like that. Or maybe Jericho and MJF in a handicap match. Yeah. Now that they're, now that they're inner circle. Uh, no, because you know that's going to mean we're going to get like four months of Cody Rhodes and Darby Allen versus MJF and Chris Jericho. God, I, think I hope we're not. finding out ways to make all of my predictions come true. So thank you. <laughs> well, thank you, everyone. We got if, you, dog. If I, if I could segue from your prediction. Yeah, and tell you ex- literally- and tell you exactly why you're wrong. <laughs> and I have to preface this by saying this prediction cannot completely come true until the beginning of 2022. Um, this is the long con prediction, uh, but I'm going to do it anyway. Kenny Omega is not only going to carry the AEW world title for every single day of 2021. He is also going to accumulate several other world title belts from several other companies, uh, probably NWA. He'll beat Nick Aldis. He's going to beat Rich Swan. He's going to beat, um, you know, he's going to maintain that triple a title. Um, you know, and hopefully there's some other things here and there. I'd love to see him uh, wrestle some indie promotions if possible to win their belts. Um, if 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 they're up and running, obviously COVID, we'll see. Um, but Kenny will carry all these belts. He's going to look like Ultimo Dragon until he drops the AEW World Title. And the second night of Wrestle Kingdom 16. Um, now, I know this sounds crazy. Here is why it makes complete sense. AEW has always wanted a relationship with New Japan. That is the key. New Japan AEW is the key to supercards. It's the key to beating WWE. It, that is that is the real key to slaying the dragon. Um, and after this year, that's a more real thing than I think anyone ever really thought was going to be coming into this. New Japan tied their wagon to Kenny. They thought that they were going to be able to keep Kenny despite losing the Bucks and Cody and Hangman. That was their guy. And they thought the relationship with Kota Ibushi and putting the title on him and carrying him carrying the company was going to be enough to keep him. And I think there was real legitimate, uh, really legitimately tough for Kenny to leave. He has already stated he plans to go back to Japan at some point in his career. Um, you know, he's bilingual. He loves Japan. He, he loved living there. It is important for Kenny to do right by New Japan. Not a better way of creating this relationship by Kenny putting over their top guy at their top show to win a belt that is not New Japan's belt. Now, obviously, eventually, Kota Ibushi or Okada or Naito, whoever New Japan chooses to beat Omega for the AEW world title, um, you know, they're going to have to do the deed at a supercard or something at some point to drop the belt. 
But Kenny puts over New Japan. New Japan and AEW create a working relationship, and going forward, we have ultimate super cards involving NWA, Impact, New Japan, and AEW at the bare minimum. <laughs> I'm sure you can work in Ring of Honor there after that point. I hope, and yeah, hopefully Ring of Honor wants to work with everybody as well. Um, we just haven't seen any of it yet, so I don't want to add them to it yet. To see We've it. seen NWA, we've seen Impact, and obviously I am pushing the New Japan as the as the prediction here. So that's why I think it's realistic. That's why I think it could happen and it could lead to a Supercard Saturday, the weekend of Mania, where in 2022 you got WrestleMania on a Sunday and the other major four, five promotions putting on a Supercard the night before, um, which would absolutely shatter WWE's numbers on that Saturday, in my opinion. Let me ask you this. On that one just alone, are you saying WrestleMania is not going to be two nights anymore? I don't think it will be two nights because here's what you have to consider. Um, They were able to do it easily and cheap because it was all done in the performance center. There's a lot more expenditure that goes into putting on two shows at two nights uh, when you are in 90,000 person arenas. Um, You have to consider the amount of cleaning it takes the amount of work it takes because let's face it if it's an outdoor arena they've got they're gonna have to break the set and rebuild that day which is not something they can really do but you can't really leave the setup overnight in case there's a weather situation you can't you can't you have to do a certain amount of, of breakdown i don't think that if if wwe wants to maintain having these ninety thousand nfl stadium wrestlemanias they're going to have to go back to one night. I think the only reason they did two nights was uh, because they were, it was an easier workload and easier to show the matches and stuff like that um, without fatigue and they're not being an audience. Yeah. And that's another thing to think about too, is like, if you're going to make that transition back over, you know, you're, you're going to have that giant stadium. You're going to have a seven hour show, which in re with which realistically turns into an all day affair if you're going as a fan, yeah. You know? I mean, and I don't think the other option is very plausible once there are fans, yeah, that are able to come back because I don't think if Vince is still living that he's gonna split WrestleMania into two nights and do like a smaller venue. I don't think that's happening. We also have to remember that this year's Mania was pre-taped. It was not live. Yeah. Excellent. So I think, you know, if we're going to do a live two-night Mania, I don't think it's going to be in, you know, uh, Raymond J. Stadium. Uh, if they're going to do two nights, it's going to be somewhere like uh, – is the Superdome down in New Orleans or Anywhere with whatever room. Atlanta's stadium is now called. Yeah. Um, I want to circle back um, to Pat. I want to tie your prediction in with Matt's because if Matt's prediction comes true about Triple H signing Kizuchika Okada, do you think that your prediction can still come true? Yes. Um, I actually... I, I feel like Okada deserves the rub and you have the built-in storyline of the best rivalry of the last decade uh, there. But there would be just as much intrigue between a Kenny Omega and Kota Ibushi match. Arguably, um, I would say maybe more. Uh, now, also, also, I'm not making this a requirement of the prediction. If this were to happen... I believe that instead of instead of having two nights of defending the world title like they did this past Wrestle Kingdom, you would have whoever wins the G1 wrestle night one for the world title, and whoever wins that match wrestles Omega the next night. 
um, and it would be a champion versus champion match to close out the show. Triple belt. Um, could you imagine a night? And could you couldn't could you imagine a night two where Kota Ibushi comes in as the uh, IWGP World Champion versus Omega coming out with twelve belts on him? <laughs> you know. And it's going to be bigger than that as a belt collector. I mean, o- Omega and the Bucks are going to carry the trios title. Uh, like it, it's it's going to be like that. Um, and it's just it's going to be a huge thing. I look, I I tried to talk Matt out of this Okada prediction. I, I know he loves it, and I understand that Triple H is. I just think it's no love happen. loves the idea of it happening is what I mean, not that you love the idea of him being in WWE. Uh, he 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 thinks Trips is going to get it done. Um, that being said, you know, God, if you're Okada, you already went through this in Impact, and you're seeing how Nakamura and Kushida are being treated in WWE, and even Asuka, who is definitely the most successful you know Japanese wrestler on the roster even she's been made into like a freaking caricature like oh you're a stereotypical Asian crazy lady who jumps around and is making stupid noises it like you've seen anime man it's bad it's exactly like it's so bad um which is how you know she broke, you know, not to go back and talk about our best ofs, but that's how you knew she broke character with that Becky Lynch uh, announcement. And you knew it was real was because she was playing such a ridiculous over the top character who ran around being an idiot after she got the belt, uh, you know, that like, totally broke character for 30 or 45 seconds and then went back to doing the dumb shit that she's, you know, her character is supposed to be doing. Um, it, it's so bad. It's like, if you don't speak perfect English and you're a foreigner, like Vince got nothing for you and we're going to make fun of you also. Um, so, God, I just, I don't see how, I just don't see how Okada can, could see how these dudes are treated. And maybe, you know what? He is the rainmaker. Maybe money will talk. Um, get that money clip out. But God, I just can't imagine he's not making that kind of money in Japan either, though. Um, in 2017, before he had signed his new contract, his previous one was 2.2 million. See, I think it can be done. I think I think Matt's predictions can come true. Um, it could be a Goldberg esque 2002 deal where it's only for one year. Um, it could be um, a part timers deal like Sting had uh, in the run to like WrestleMania 31, where he's only wrestling and making cert- certain appearances. Um, but I think, I think circling back to Pat's prediction, um, I think yeah. I think it's I think I think it's logical. I think I think it makes sense. Let me um, sell you on this. The only the only question is is how far and this and this could be the year Kenny Omega. It really could be because it seems like a majority of the predictions that are happening hinge on Kenny Omega's on, on his success this year as the belt collector. I mean, I think that we have seen too much of a build. For him not to totally succeed, at least for half a year with this mm-hmm. gimmick. Um, I mean, he's it's got to at least be the summer of Omega, right? Well, from my understanding, the way Tony Khan has been booking it, he's picked one guy to be the guy for the year. This past year, it was John Moxley. Um, and it's come out in interviews that if, if last year was the year, or if this year was the year of John Moxley, next year is the year of Omega. I think so, that's not on. So and that's and that's the thing. We we forget sometimes that like we're we're so I don't want to say spoiled because it's not necessarily a good thing, but we've been so accustomed con- conditioned yeah to 
belts changing hands every week in WWE. I mean, like they have a belt with just the intention of it changing 10 times a, a, a show. <laughs> uh, excuse me. But, um, you know, this is how wrestling has been. The, it was. It's not weird for a heavyweight champion to hold the belt for years or 18 months. Yeah. You know, it's it's more – it's before WWE started doing the belt, belt draw, like it was more weird for you not to have at least like a six-month run with a world title. It just didn't make sense. You know, man, oh. Oh, they, they clearly have no faith in that dude if he didn't – hold the title for a year you know i mean you know, like to pat's point bruno san martino was champion for almost eight full years i mean oh, john moxley held it from february <laughs> until december and that's what i'm that's what i'm saying I, aew has shown the only belts that really hot potatoed it didn't i wouldn't even really say they hot potatoed that much because there were so many defenses but really was ftr winning the the tag titles and losing them yeah, yeah. I mean, they have really established, like, and and God rest his soul, Brody was the only one on the TNT title that, like, really didn't have a great run as far as time goes. They're definitely trying to make it a point that, like, the champ's the champ, and he's going to show up, and he's going to be the champ. And in, even if, you know, that's one thing they've done a really great job of is not every heel has to be a chicken shit heel. Yeah. Just because you're a bad guy doesn't mean you have to be weak. And that's the formula that WWE has gone with time after time after time that like people forget, like you can be a bad guy and just be dominant. Like, God, please get Bobby it. Lashley, I was, I was going to say, get it right. and Put the world title on Bobby Lashley and just let him beat dudes to death, please. There's no reason Bobby Lashley should be hiding behind anybody, uh, you know, and yet here we are, you know, and, and they've done it. And, and don't get me wrong. Uh, fair is fair. They have booked the Hurt Business fantastically to the point where they are the Hurt Business, and I'll call them by their real names. Um, you know, instead of the Hurt Lock. Instead of the Hurt Locker, they've earned it. Uh, but no, like, uh, you know, we're not going to spoil creative control, but mm. uh, but you know, that is the that, that's the main problem for me with WWE is bad guys got to be chicken shit and not want to fight and not want to be tough, and that's that's a huge problem. Yeah. Like even even Roman Reigns, who they want to pretend like he's a tough guy and it's his yard. Has Jay Uso running interference? He, he yeah, he hasn't he hasn't won clean a, a clean since he won the belt. Yeah, and that he's had to, he, he's had he's had to resort to hurt like hurting somebody else or getting a run in by somebody else or you know there's just been no, nothing clean. Yeah. And and if you're gonna build this dude as this big bad monster, like okay, come out here. You know, spear a dude, Superman, punch him, whatever you want to do, but win and look dominant. Look like you hurt somebody and make people afraid to come to the ring like Brock. Yeah. Um, I do want to hit one last thing on Pat's. I know we've talked about this last prediction here a lot. Um, the reason why I think that last one is so great. I think it's my second favorite prediction other than Raw going back to two hours because please, God, give me one more hour of my life back. Uh, <laughs> but, man, uh, how great is it that, you know, Kenny Omega, the belt collector, not only fighting for the titles at Wrestle Kingdom against Kota Ibushi, but Kota Ibushi trying to wrestle Kenny Omega free from the clutches of Don Callis and that evil uh, cleaner mindset, you know? Um, yeah. you have so many different storylines with that that you can just so quickly pull back in just because of their history. Um, I think that'd be wonderful. Wonderful. I would pay so much money to see Kenny Omega versus Kota Ibushi again. Wonderful. Uh, wake up at three in the morning for it. <laughs> yeah. I'll come home from a midnight shift. 
tired as all get up and I will stay up for that. Man. So is it just me or was there a lot of like negative <laughs> predictions? Had this year made us all negative? I think so. I mean, I think negative is all in the eye of the beholder. I mean, I, agree. I, I don't want to see The Undertaker or John Cena personally. I think a lot of people will be super stoked about both of those. I'm just not. You know, like people are going to mark out if John Cena shows up and wins the Royal Rumble. Yeah. Um, people are going to mark out for The Undertaker to beat somebody again at WrestleMania. People are going to like, mark for, you know, your names. Uh, I, we said it off air before we started. The match of the year, according to WWE, was the Boneyard match. Like, yeah, you know, you can't even put a real wrestling match over. You uh, you put a cinematic match where you can stop and start and took 12 hours to shoot over as your match of the year. Like, what does that say to the wrestlers on your on your roster? Like, it does not matter how hard you work in ring because whatever we're going to shoot and film and do independently, we're going to put over. I don't think, am I correct in saying that AJ and Daniel Bryan from SmackDown wasn't even on that list of top 10? Uh, no. They were. Uh, he oh. was number six. Okay, I missed it. My So, again, number six, I would say the four of us probably all say that's a top three match of the year for WWE, if not the top one. Uh, or at least work rate wise, it's well, definitely Dragon top five. Walter Ilya Dragonoff was so incredible. But well, I'm, I'm talking main roster. Oh, then yeah, yeah. yeah. For me, it's between that and the uh, ladder match at Cla- Night of Champions. Clash of the, Champions, I think. Clash of Champions, the triple threat with Hardy's, you know, ear being handcuffed to a ladder. Sami Zayn's creative evil geniusness. Yeah. Yeah. But got to give it to The Undertaker, right? Yeah, because it's his last ride until it isn't. Yeah. Well. I have one thing I want to throw out, and we'll even ask the fans this. Uh, quick, quick roundabout. Let's do something positive. Sting. He's been in AEW now for 27 days. Uh, I only know that because I'm looking up at the uh, Wikipedia article for AEW's champions and Kenny Omega won the title winners coming. And that was 27 days of a title reign. Where does Sting fit into AEW? It, like, what is his role going to be in 2021? He's going to get the ring, but I don't think that's going to be his primary. I, you know, there's a lot of intrigue and there's a lot of reason to be interested there because I don't think anybody really knows what they're going to, like, how they're going to use him. Uh, like, obviously, it's going to involve Darby. Um, but I think there's a ton of intrigue there. But at the same time, like, man, it could be really crappy. I mean, it could be awesome. It could be really crappy. Like yeah. there's, I have no idea. Like I couldn't tell you what they're gonna do this thing. As long as it's not wrestling a Hardy brother, like I think I'm okay with it. Yeah. You don't want a broken brilliance match with the many faces of Sting. Well, we didn't get I, Joker Sting from Impact again. I don't. I don't think he's gonna do any more broken stuff after his last promo. I don't think you're wrong. Um, also, just because I do want to talk about it. Uh, AEW Dark, two hours long. And yeah, I saw that. The like little clip that they showed you is there was a Dark Order match with uh, Alex Reynolds and John Silver. Might be interesting to go. I, I know they, they taped that last Tuesday, or well, last Wednesday, um, but it will be interesting. Um, man, 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 man. 2020. What a crazy, crazy year. Um, I'm very much so looking forward to 2021, but I am ever so hopeful that 
we will get more opportunities like we did in 2020, maybe hang out with the bouncers again. Um, also, uh, to BCB's wife, I do want to once again apologize for the fight that they had on Monday. Uh, we, we've been talking about it since March. I'm sorry. We, we put it in their heads. That's on us. I'm a, I'm a love Brian. We love BCB. They're the best. We're going to stop asking them who's going to win a fight. <laughs> had to happen. It had to happen. <laughs> um, <laughs> God, yeah, I want those guys back. I want to talk to them. I want to talk to Caprice Coleman. I want to talk to Jared Silverclay. I want to talk to all of these wonderful people that we had the chance to in 2021 again. Uh, yeah. God, I'm excited for all the potential of 2021. How are you guys? In that same mindset? Yes. I'm optimistic about pro wrestling. Um, I'm not optimistic about WWE. But when you talk about pro wrestling, I don't think you talk about WWE. Yeah, it's sports entertainment. They won't even call their guys wrestlers anymore. So whatever. All right. Well, everyone, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, if you enjoyed what you heard, check us out at kofi.com slash pwo123. It's as easy as one, two, three. Uh, and just for a small price for a cup of coffee, you can help us put on these wonderful, wonderful shows. Um, please also, if you're not checking this out on our YouTube channel, check out the YouTube channel. We have such incredible programs like Cots and Claire, take it away. Uh, you can check out the quick count um, every day, but not currently because I'm trying to find a permanent home. Um, not my actual home, just a permanent place where I can shoot and give you guys better content. Um, you can check out the ref bump with me and Gia and and uh, Jeffrey Long, which um, I do want to pass along. Um, hoping everything is going well with Jeff and Jeff and and Jeff's mother. Um, hoping everything goes well. So thoughts and prayers flowing that way for him. Um, also check out some old referees discretion videos. Um, you know, working on some new stuff. So very excited to see what 2021 can bring. I have a lot of goals. Uh, I have a lot of resolutions. Um, so um, please, guys, go check out. Um, go, go check that out. So if you want to support us and you don't want to give the money, pay us, pay us in views. Pay us in views so that YouTube can pay us. We are. So that you don't have to. So you can enjoy this content and you can support us out of the kindness of your own heart, heart and soul. If you don't have the money to fiscally support us, support us with your likes, your comments, your shares. Sub, baby! Yeah, your, sub, your subs. There are plenty of ways for you to support us without you, you know, doing it monetarily. I mean, we get some pop belly yeah. subs. I was going to say, yeah. I prefer warmed up subs to cold subs. <laughs> meatballs. Uh, meatball anyway, subs. Cold Scorpio. Mm, slash funk. Uh, I, I will say, I do really like those monetary uh, tricks. I'm not going to lie. But I, I, really, so I really thought you were going to say, I'm not going to lie. I really like meatball subs. Uh, I could go for a meatball yeah. sub right now. Yeah, With that. Cool. Guys, I must bid you adieu. He's going to do the thing. Year. Welcome to 2021. Do the thing. Right there, baby. Do the thing, Bye. Matt. Do the thing. Bang. Appreciate y'all. You did the thing. Have a good night.